Welcome to this series of videos that covers the transition of cymbals from the orchestra to the marching band to the rock band. Now considered a must-have part of every drum set, cymbals weren't always used because of their beautiful sounds. Crash cymbals were frequently used in celebrations and funerals, especially in the Chinese culture, to ward off evil spirits because of the racket they made. As manufacturing processes improved and the sounds of cymbals became more beautiful, they began to be incorporated into orchestral compositions as early as 1680. In the centuries that followed, the use of crash cymbals became more common. And in the early 1800s, two Italian composers, Gaspare Spontini and Gioacchino Rossini, who was best known for the Barber of Seville and William Tell, decided to combine the bass drum and crash cymbal rolls into one through the use of a counter hoop mounted bracket that held the cymbal in an inverted fashion. That effectively combined the roles of the bass drum player and the crash cymbal player. And by the way, Hector Berlioz, a French composer, thought this was a terrible idea and said so in his 1844 treatise on orchestration. Despite Berlioz's opinion, the use of bass drum mounted cymbals lived on in some marching bands. But the mounting bracket that required a performer to lift a heavy cymbal over the top of the bass drum wouldn't last. The task of performing these two instruments simultaneously became easier with a handheld wire beater. And believe it or not, both of these inventions take us one step closer to the modern drum set. Modifications to this bracket allowed the cymbal to be mounted parallel to the drum head. When traveling shows and dance music were in full swing, but before bass drum pedals and snare drum stands were invented, a style of playing called double drumming emerged. The snare drum rested on a chair, and regular drumsticks were used to play the bass drum and bracket mounted cymbal, sometimes together. In the next video, we'll see how the invention of the bass drum pedal and a device called the clanger became all the rage in the late 1800s. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the flip side. This activity is made possible by the voters of Minnesota through a grant from the East Central Regional Arts Council thanks to a legislative appropriation from the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund.